People say less is more. At Red Barn, we think less is better. It's what you won't find that sets our natural premium pet food apart. No byproducts, no corn or soy, no fillers. Just the natural ingredients your pets need to live the healthy life they deserve. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food. Simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Visit redbarninc.com slash coupon to save a dollar off your first can. Blog Talk Radio. Good morning and welcome to Unlimited Realities. I'm your host, Lisa Zimmer, and I am just thrilled to offer you the wisdom and genius today with my guests. Okay, I'm a little excited about today's guest because I spoke to this woman who has remained an idol of mine 20 years ago on my show, Unlimited Realities, and she is, excuse me, excuse my voice, excuse me if I grunt, excuse me if I grimace in pain. I didn't want to have to do this, but I have... Well, I fell down a flight of stairs yesterday, and I broke two ribs, and I am propped up with many pillows on to a leave, and I'm going to really try hard not to move. But if you hear a gasp, it's not me just losing it, okay? <laughs> just a little outburst that I can't control right now. However, getting back to my, my highlight today, okay, I have Barbara Mark Hubbard today. She is an absolute ingenious soul. She's a living legend, a pioneer of conscious evolution. And I really am stoked to have these two incredible co-creative superstars today. I'm so blessed to be able to chat with them and bring their wisdom. Uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard has been uh, quoted by Deepak Chopra as the voice for conscious evolution. She is world famous for her best-selling books, her social consciousness innovation, and her global activism. Barbara is, has written a new book that we're going to talk about today. It's called The Evolutionary Testament of Co-Creation, The Promise Will Be Kept. And then after we speak with Barbara, which I really hope I can get a whole hour uh, again with because this book is just phenomenal. Um, we have another phenomenal guest, Dr. Mitch Tischler, who is the author of Me Finally, Navigating Life with an Open Heart. So did I tell you the resonance of these two souls? I, I did this intentionally, people. Okay, so we're going to love this show today. And without further ado, let me introduce the infamous, wonderful, Barbara Marks Hubbard into the show. Welcome, welcome, Barbara. Welcome to Unlimited Realities. Thank you for being my guest today. Hello, hello, Barbara. Hello there. Yes, can you hear How me? How are you? Yes, I'm I well. Can hear I'm you. I'm evolving all the time. <laughs> As am I. It is so wonderful to have you on Unlimited Realities. God bless you and your wonderful insight and genius. I'm so I'm so stoked to just dive right in here. Go, um, go for it. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. Now you have this incredible book, The Evolutionary Testament of Co Creation, The Promise Will Be Kept. Let's start off talking about what the promise is and what are we talking about will be kept. Well, of course, this book was inspired by a Christ experience. And in the Christ experience I had, I was aware that the whole story of Jesus was in two parts. One part was the pre-crucifixion miracles, blessings, creating an abundance, um, virgin birth, all of those so-called miracles. Then came the crucifixion, which was clearly something he chose to do under the guidance of what he believed God wanted him to do after the Garden of Gethsemane. And then comes three days in the tomb and the appearance of a new Jesus in a new body, seen by Mary Magdalene and others, and that was, of course, the founding of the Christian religion. If he had not reappeared or appeared to reappear, nobody would have remembered a brilliant Jewish teacher. So as I had realized that, when I had a 
a momentary inspiration of mass metamorphosis of people all being changed because I'd been studying the biological revolution, nanotech, quantum computing, artificial intelligence. I also already realized that we're being changed. So right. I was guided to the New Testament, and as I started to read it, I, I saw it's coded evolution. What Jesus was saying was going to happen, and that would happen to all of us. You will do the works that I do, and greater works will you do in the fullness of time, was actually what was happening. We are doing many of the miracles that Jesus said he could do. We have the technological capacities to do even more miracles, mm-hmm. and we're not doing it with Christ's love. We're and, not and, and, infusing our huge, huge capacity. So I was guided to the New Testament. I started to write. I wrote for six months without stopping. Every passage I read seemed to me to indicate what we can do and how we can do it and how truthful it is in our generation, the first to have the powers to do what Jesus did. That's incredible because that was that and you were I was going to segue into my next question, which was how can we start to evolve our perception in seeing modern day miracles that actually are happening already, but we're kind of poo pooing them away, and we're not really looking at the sacredness of what's being created before us. How can we evolve that perception well, read the evolutionary testament of co-creation. And recognize <laughs> so the second part is that out of which I was able to do this evolutionary testament was what I call evolutionary eyes. I see from the perspective of the 13.8 billion years of evolution. I see everything as having been created through the origin of creation, the great flaring forth, the beginning of hydrogen, and then the formation of atoms, molecules, cells, multicells, animals, humans, and us. And you put yourself in that trajectory. It's mm-hmm. a trajectory. And you see right. that at every turn on the spiral, there was higher consciousness, greater freedom, mm-hmm. more complex order single cell to multi-cell and that what's happening now is we are planet earth becoming one living organism because we've Mm -hmm. just we've seen ourselves from space as one body but now with climate change and other things we're recognizing that we have a shared environment that if we destroy a part of our environment we're going to be destroying a whole system here You can't just separate people out according to where they happen to live or what culture they're in through global warming. It doesn't matter what culture you are. (laughs) Right, right. You know, if 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 the waters are rising over you, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, a Christian, or a Jew. So exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Not going to be different for you, whatever your religion. So, so the fact that that this is happening to us as a collective. I call us members of one generation. And the one generation is everybody on earth because no one has been through a shift from a high-tech, overpopulating, polluting species to a co-evolving, co-creative humanity. And my, Mm my... So in order to get this perspective, I believe... Two two very important things have happened to me. One is I gained evolutionary eyes way before I understood Jesus. And I did it through my understanding of people like Sri Aurobindo, Teilhard de Chardin, Buckminster Fuller, Jonas Salk, a lot of mm-hmm. major evolutionaries from the earlier period in the 1960s. Then when I had the Christ experience, after having studied evolution and transhumanist, uh, you know, like Ray Kurzweil and the ability to upload consciousness into silicon and so on, when I had uh, studied that as a co-founder of the World Future Society and encountered this mystical experience of the risen Christ telling me, you will do the works that I do and greater works, and I said, what shall I call you? And the answer was, call me your potential self. Hmm. 
I wow. came to show you what you can do, all of you. Barbara, I want demonstrations now. When you combine loving God above all else, your neighbor as yourself, nature as yourself, combined with science and technology, you'll all be changed. I want demonstrations now. So wow. I have been a huge mission <laughs> to demonstrate I guess you this. have, Barbara. You, you, <laughs> you've been the voice. I mean, you are... You know, you're you're the voice of this collective consciousness that's really rising us to this awareness of of shaking off the old lens and putting on this new lens to really look at things from a deeper perspective. And by looking at the New Testament through your insightful view, it transforms how you read the New Testament. And you know, I. You know, you, you, you went to speak at, um, you were a keynote speaker for the Leadership Conference for Women's Religious in 2012. What can we talk about in regard to the New Testament, how the role of women played, Mary Magdalene specifically, and what we can do in looking at that, you know, feminine aspect within teaching and religion and spirituality to support it in the future. Where do we look? Where are we going with that? Well, you know, I want to just uh, share something with you about the women religious. And do you know of a very powerful teacher called Ilya Delio? She's a sister. She was head of the Catholic Center at George Washington University, Georgetown University. No, I don't. Okay, so she has written a new book called Making All Things New, Catholicity, Cosmology, and Consciousness. And I want to read you what she said about me. Now, this is the Catholic cosmologist of our time. And she says, um, finally, after searching the, the lines of Catholicity from the Big Bang to quantum consciousness and evolution to the life of Jesus and the emergence of church from the patristic to the postmodern age chapter 9 revisits the meaning of catholicity in the light of scientific insights cosmology and asks what are we called up to today as citizens of the universe as followers of jesus christ and members of the church which i'm not i'm not a catholic so here's what she says it's really quite interesting The final chapter seeks to clarify the meaning of Catholicity in its various levels and to examine briefly models of it in our current age. Of the four models discussed in this chapter, Pope Francis, Barbara Marks Hubbard, the Dalai Lama, and the Leadership Conference of Women Religious, I want to each one of these categories. And in Chapter 9, that's what she does. And she says, like Pope Francis, Barbara is a Christic fractal. <laughs> now, you may never have wow. heard of being a Christic fractal, no. but I think many of us are. It is a, like a fractal. It's a little tiny fragment of the Christ consciousness that's everywhere right. in so many people. Right. But, that's incredible. That's so it incredible. means you're the love of, of you're embodying the Christ that was the whole point that Christ came to tell us this in fact That's we're right. doing it and and by so I am I am like able to just say clearly because it happened to me that the whole goal of human history now is to embody the expression yes. of unconditional love of one another as yourself of nature as part of yourself and as a, of the new science and technology as the extended capacities of a universal species. And would you say that this is where you're, when you wrote that Jesus is the forecast for a new species now emerging among us, that this is how we can expect our future and our collective consciousness to really evolve? Can we, yes. can we, Barbara? <laughs> can we you know what? I think it depends on us. <laughs> I, I yes, think the really right. great issue of our times is can we? I don't believe there's any. Uh, it's not. It's not certain because there's freedom in the system. 
right. it's a free choice for everybody as to whether they right. wish to say yes to the deep.